Hello everyone, I'm Sha, the writing and research half of the Tales and Oracle of Eleven. Some of you may know me as Little Cat on this channel, but for those who are new, hello, 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 and I hope you're having a great week, month, year, and beyond. I get told about a festival I have never even heard of, and the mysticism of it has yet to be debunked, so we sit in Camp Believer at the moment and maybe one day I'll get to see it in real life. There's also conversations about cultural absorption and media dictating what the people know and love, as well as the struggle of freelancing and what it means to be in her line of work. We also use the name Lao and Laos interchangeably all throughout this interview, so please comment your opinions about the correct pronunciation. I would really appreciate the help. Here is Emily, our artist from Laos. My name is Emily. I'm a 3D character animator and illustrator and working to become a 3D modeler in the future currently. Fantastic. And I am based in Vientiane, Laos mm. right now. And if you want to follow me, I have, I'm active on Instagram, Twitter, and ArtStation, mm -hmm. all the same username. Nice. So it's called. Uh, my username is Lata Emi, mm -hmm. L A T T A E M I. Okay, so that all yeah. this information will be down in the 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 doobly doo box at the bottom of the video if you want to check out more for the people who are watching. Um, uh, and I think I think my first question to you about Laos is: Is that how you pronounce it? Because I've heard people pronounce it as Lao. And as Laos. Yeah, Lao, Laos. <laughs> does it? Does both of it work? Yeah, Cause... sometimes there's no S, sometimes there's the S, so I guess whatever works for... Okay. Do you know <laughs> why? Anyone, yeah. I'm not sure, actually. Because Lao, there's an S at the end. Exactly. So, yeah, I guess Lao, Laos. Hmm, yeah, you hear it, you know, alternately. I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, oh. good question. <laughs> Cause, cause I don't want to. Maybe I'm the weird one. I, I don't Maybe know. Maybe I'm the uh, weird like, one. It's it's either or because I've heard it in the news being pronounced differently by different people, uh, and I don't know enough Laotian people to sort of ask that question. And I don't want to step on anybody's toes to be like it's Lao, and they're like, no, it's Laos. What? You know, thinking about it now, I'm sure it's Lao because the French gave us that name. Oh. And they don't pronounce the S. Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay. yeah. If if the French even the, give... even the capital city Viem Chan uh -huh. is a French word. What? It's the no. French Yeah, they they gave it the name. Our old capital was Lorne Prabang. But then they move it. They moved the capital and then we changed the name. The French people <laughs> blah blah blah. Yeah, they, all that history. Yeah. They they did the so, colonization yeah, I, thing. A strong feeling Lao is the, the right pronunciation. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, for for everybody for... who does know how to pronounce this, uh, let let us know in the comment section so that I don't continue doing the wrong thing. Um, but yeah, how how do you find yourself in the arts? You were saying that you're actually a three D modeler, or you're working towards yeah, becoming a three D modeler. So how I got it in the arts to start with, I feel like. I've always been into art, like drawing and painting since since I was little. I feel like you hear this a lot from many artists. It's not uh -huh. like anything special or unique. Um, I draw a lot. I always, and I continue, even through middle school and high school, I always like enjoyed art. Like mm -hmm. art continued to be that one subject where I always like get an A, all, always an A. and yeah and and i continued that art journey through college mm -hmm. i went to college i applied as an illustrator but then i discovered 3d i yeah. discovered 3d in my sophomore year so i'm like oh 3d animation interesting and i took that path i took the path and then i started working as a 3d character animator I still work as a 3D artist until today, basically, and and I'm still still honing my skills, still studying, and I'm taking classes on 3D modeling, just trying to expand my 3D knowledge 
3D skills. And yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. And illustration has always been like, it's like drawing will never go away. It's like, yes, I'm doing 3D, but drawing is like the foundation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't let it go. <laughs> What's your pains when it comes to 3D modeling? For me, it's having to switch to different softwares because you have uh, Maya, you have 3D Max, you have Rhino, you have all of these things and they don't carry forward the same skills sort of because all the functions are different. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I feel like you can't just stick to one software to achieve any everything that you want. Like when you sculpt, you use ZBrush. Mm. When you're doing topology, you use Maya. When you're doing textures, you use Substance Painter. When you're doing hair or, um, uh -huh. uh, you know, special effects things, you use um, X-Gen, uh -huh. Arnold. You know, it's it's definitely like a, a steep curve that you have to like study one thing at a time yeah. and really like, and it's really technical. It gets technical really quickly. Yeah. And I, if you don't have the patience, I feel like it can really drive you mad. Like I can imagine, you know, going through each thing at a time. Yeah, I think like that's like the most like think the most challenging. Mm -hmm. Just trying to balance everything to achieve the vision that you want with and the then, character. And yeah, stuff. and then um, trying to get the correct settings for every single software yeah. because they're all different. And you're like sitting there going, "Okay, exactly. what was my settings for this one?" <laughs> yes ah uh, yes i always have to write it down like oh this setting is like this value that setting is that value <laughs> it's the worst and, you know just have something to start with and then you could just tweak it afterwards uh -huh. but yeah to remember all those you know <laughs> right and then when something settings, goes wrong yeah. you're like okay what did i do wrong this time everything oh, is the yeah. same why is it bad no oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, like, like why why is everything breaking why does this thing look weird <laughs> why does that look weird and then you have to go back step back go uh -huh. to like yeah it's pretty yeah it's pretty tedious it gets tedious really quickly mm -hmm. i feel like the sculpting part is the most fun uh -huh. and then the rest is like <laughs> i know i know right? technical i know very technical um... I, I can imagine it's even worse for you because I just do surfaces. I do surfaces, furniture. These things don't move. But you do hair and 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 clothes. I've tried doing clothes before, the, the draping, and then I give up. I was like, no. Oh, yeah, Mar Marvelous Designer, right? That's another software to learn. <laughs> uh, it's just, it never stops. And then it updates every year, too. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, like, have to keep up with, like, the new features, mm -hmm. new updates, like, or else you're gonna fall behind, your demo reel is gonna fall behind, blah, Ugh. blah, blah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Ugh. It's Ugh. Uh, a lot to think about sometimes. Yeah, it's it's painful because that that is your bread and butter, essentially. Your entire profession depends on you keeping abreast of all this software, all this um, mm -hmm. new new plugins, I guess, to make your yeah, workflow easier. Yeah, new plugins. Yeah, to like uh, speed up your workflow mainly, mm -hmm. like just try to speed up your production and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's fun though. <laughs> it is. I agree. I feel like um, I, yeah, I I do enjoy it. Like, I feel like only the beginning when you're doing your portfolio, you just kind of had to kind of know little things here and there. But I feel like once you get into the studio, it's more specialized. Like. Mm. You want to just sculpt, you sculpt. You just want to do hair, you do hair. Do clothes, you just do clothes. But but it takes, I feel like, little steps to get to that point. Yeah. At the beginning, it's like you just kind of had to know everything. But the more experience, the more, you know, you climb up the ladder, I guess. Mm -hmm. The more specialized you become. So I'm hoping, you know. <laughs> <laughs> one day. I'm still one working. Day. Yeah, one day. Still, Still working my way. You know, towards it's that path. It's, it's wonderful to hear you um, so passionately talk about things that you're trying to achieve and how you're getting there. Um, it is something that I think a lot of junior designers and people still in school mm -hmm. sort of want to hear. Like, there is a goal there. You can reach it. It's just a process. It's an entire thing. Yeah, it's a process. You can't really skip certain things. You just mm -hmm. kind of have to be patient and just 
you know, just go through it. Just go do it. it. How much do you know about your country's folk tales and oral history? You know, honestly, not much <laughs> at all. <laughs> Most of it, I feel like, is through research. Like, when Sun reached out to me about this project, I, I, I had no idea where to start. I'm like, oh. hmm, research time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so honestly, yeah, not much at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's because, um, yes, I grew up in Laos, but I went to an international school. So most, most of the things that we were taught were like Western materials and li mm. literature. We're not really exposed to like Lao stories. Mm -hmm. My parents didn't really introduce anything either. I don't remember learning much from them uh -huh. about, La you know, the Lao folk tales and stories. So feel like most of it come when I'm older, when I'm more curious on my own, like, oh, you know, what's up? <laughs> like, you know, just doing my own research, I feel like. Um, yeah, I know more when I grew up. Oh, uh, okay, okay. That that checks out. That's part mm -hmm. of the reason why we're doing this book uh, and Oracle Deck series. Purely because there's so many things we know about other people's culture, especially the Western side, like Grimm's fairy tales and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's so quick for us to quote um greek mythology compared to uh southeast asian mythology and i i sort of found it very embarrassing for myself to be able to do that and uh i did so much reading when it came to egyptian mythologies greek i ate that up like that was mm -hmm. my life mm -hmm. growing up and and the realization that the only thing i knew about my country is stuff that you find on tv that is already popular mm and ghosts and ghosts oh my gosh yes <laughs> all our ghosts and i'm like surely I, yep, our yep. entire culture just doesn't just depend on being terrifying so terrifying if you commit certain sins you become this kind of ghost this mm -hmm. kind of ghost as punishment when you die yeah yeah all, or the rituals so, oh my god there's there's a yeah, lot all of the like, rituals stuff. yeah Oh, it's wild. But but yeah, so, yeah. so knowing that um, you sort of... I, I'm also a third culture kid in that I grew up in, in international school. Mm -hmm. So again, a lot of my history came when I was older as well. So I, I totally understand where you're coming from. Because of that, I uh -huh. feel like I'm exposed a lot to like Disney. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, the uh, yeah, a lot of Disney children's tales. So... I would say, yeah, those are like definitely my favorites. Like, I grew up with Disney. I grew uh -huh. up knowing all the Disney films, watching all the Disney films, drawing the Disney characters. So, <laughs> yeah, I would say though, Disney is definitely my favorite mm -hmm. uh, film to go to. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, Especially I... the latest one with Raya, The Last Dragon. How, how did Have you, you seen? feel about that? I, I saw it uh, recently, actually, because it was finally on Disney+. Plus. And my friend was like, hey, watch this. And I'm like, okay, okay, finally. Um, I am not a fan of how uh, Aquafina portrayed the dragon. She's so ditzy. Yeah. For me, I think what bothered me more was um, the, the design. Ah. The character design of the dragon. Yes. Because it does not reflect the kind of dragon that we see in Southeast Asia at uh -huh. all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it's so different. So that one really took me, like, it really made me, like, hmm, okay. It was, I think it was very, it was, like... it was too hairy. Like, yeah. It looks more like, it looks more like the dragon you see in East, East Asia. Yes. Versus yes. Southeast Asia. I so I'm like, that. okay, that's not accurate. They, they totally failed the, the dragon for sure. Yeah. And I know it's supposed to be like a make-believe Southeast Asia thing, but it was too much of a mismatch. And I think there's too much Thai culture in the whole thing. Yeah. Thai. Like, I felt I mean, like... I see some... I don't know. I can't really pinpoint because on the character's clothes, like, the pattern seems, mm -hmm. like, more like Indonesian or... Malaysian, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, I, it, I and I then the go ahead. The ahead. environment design is more 
Yeah, the, I, th- I thought the environment design was quite accurate with the tree, yes. the water, uh-huh. the houses. Yeah, the, the architecture was pretty accurate, I thought. But the, the clothing, the... I mean, they mix a lot of cultures, right? Yeah. And like, I don't know the region, how I feel about it's, it's, that. It gets, yeah, it gets a bit confusing. Yeah. I mean, I understand yeah, that I they I'm want to... I'm not sure how I feel, too. Yeah. I understand that they wanted to introduce, perhaps, a facet of Southeast Asia, which is um, of the American diaspora, technically, because, you know, uh, America yeah. is everything. So they wanted to introduce, like, oh, here's another market we can sort of go in. But I feel like... And I love food. So when I saw the food, I'm like, where's the rest of the food? There's yeah. only one kind of food. <laughs> yeah. I can't really remember, but I just yeah, remember feeling like a bit confused. Yeah. Like oh, what 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 are all these mixtures coming from? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Don't they could have I feel like they could have just picked one country, maybe Thailand. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I mean, other Disney films has been very specific. Mm. I feel like with the origin of where it's from, but then when it comes to Southeast Asia, I did just they just kind of like squish them into a ball and throw it at <laughs> yeah, the wall. Yeah, squish them together. Yeah, I feel like if they just picked one country, we 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 would have it would have worked out. Yeah, I think like, I think if we, they had picked one country, we collectively would have celebrated. But now we just sit there yeah, confused. Yeah. Like, That's what, what are you trying to show? I, I don't know if I can be proud of this. I don't know what you're representing and I don't know what you're telling the rest of the world about Southeast Asia. Like, where where is the direction yeah. for this? Who did this? What I'm trying to say is I'm <laughs> who, quite disappointed. Who's the director? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess it's a step, mm. you know, at least um, if, if we're trying to find the good things exactly. out of it. It's like, yeah, it's a beginning. They did they visited countries around this region. They visited mm-hmm. Laos. They had a consultant on their team who who is from Laos. I think they hired an anthropologist to like consult uh, about their themes and concept with, about the film, which that was pretty cool. Uh-huh. But yeah, it's yeah. I think one voice actor, like the little kid, one of the child characters, were voiced by like a Lao American uh-huh. actor. So yeah, it's uh, I feel like yeah, it's a it's a step forward to like you know representing the nation, the region, the nation. The region, yeah. In a way, yeah, yeah. Well, in a we, way, we know that there's <laughs> yeah. a lot of animators, there's a lot of illustrators coming from our region, going into yeah. that industry. So we're going to see a lot more stuff. I hope. I want to see a lot more stuff. I, I hope so. I hope we have, so. We have so many interesting stories to pick from. And we have mm-hmm. so many, like if we're, if we're going the Disney route, right? We have so many absolutely um, amazing stories of women. Like just women mm-hmm. taking charge of everything. Like we have uh, centuries worth of uh, women who ruled certain uh, certain kingdoms, especially. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And also murder women. Mm-hmm. Women who just like flip out and just murder everyone. You were saying that previously you didn't sort of grow up with these kind of stories. Um, do you have a favorite story now as an adult? Favorite story? Yeah. Do you have like, one from anywhere? Uh, from Laos, if you have. Oh, from Laos. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, I don't I feel like the most story that I hear all the time uh-huh. is a. Uh, I think you know this too. It's about people really talk about the Naga. Uh huh. You know, the, the Naga protecting the Mekong River, guardian mm-hmm. of the water, you know, it's a story. So many stories surrounding the Naga. And I feel like that's my favorite because it's magical. It feels magical and mystical. <laughs> and there's a whole festival dedicated for, you know, the Naga. Like, I, I don't know. I... I don't know if you heard of this. It's called the Naga Fireball Festival. No, never. It's common in Thailand and Laos. Oh, I didn't know about this. But yeah, the Naga Fireball, it's like this festival that happens like around October or November, like at Uh the beginning, where people, 
it's like a Buddhist let day is where mm -hmm. you give alms. Is that how you say it? Like to, to the yeah. Buddha. And it's the, it's the last day. It's like the last day where you celebrate it. Uh -huh. People would go to the Mekong River. It's not just any Mekong. There, there are certain spots where it ha this happens, where they believe that the Naga released these fireballs into the air. And you can see it. It comes out from the water into the air. And <laughs> people believe that it comes from the Naga. Wait. And people would... Wait, like, what? Uh, like, okay. like actual, actual, like, globes of light? Or... Actual globes of light. Of light no coming way. Coming out from the water. Yeah. I need to see this. Yeah. Some people think it's a hoax. Uh-huh. But it's, again, it's an unsolved mystery. Like, no, no one can solve this. Many scientists have tried to debunk it. Uh -huh. many times but they they couldn't debunk it yeah some people say it's like oh it's just gas uh water some tiny i don't know tiny volcano or something under the water <laughs> and it's releasing gas into the air uh-huh uh causing it to look like fire or something but still they can't they couldn't prove that uh -huh. until today so people many people believe that it's you know, it's from the Naga, uh -huh. uh, celebrating the day when the Buddha returns back to Earth from heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I feel like that that one is the most like mis mysterious and magical story for me. Like, I I believe it. I don't That's know. Wild. I believe it's real. <laughs> That's wild. I mean, it's I, unsolved. I, you can't say it's not real because no one has proven it. Exactly. Yet. It's I not have real. Never heard of this. Um, because obviously the most popular. Thai festival is uh, Songkran, I think, the one where you run around and shoot people with water guns. Yeah, yeah, I, that's, I've, yeah. I've never heard of, of uh, the Dragon Fireball Festival. That is, that is amazing. Now yeah, I there are it. tons of YouTube videos, you know, just people seeing the fireball. It doesn't happen consistently. Some uh -huh. years, people, it, it doesn't happen. Like, you don't see the fireball. Like, people, like, go sit by the river waiting to see it but it doesn't it doesn't appear but uh -huh. it would appear after the festival when everything is quiet everyone is gone then the locals the people who live along the riverside they would see it so oh, they're like, oh my god you know there are incidents like that it's uh -huh. unexpected it's no one can explain it it's a mystery so Oh my I've God. been once. I've only been once. Uh huh. Did you? You saw it, right? But uh, no, but no, no, I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to go again? I didn't see it. Oh, I it's feel... too crowded. Too crowded. Too, way too crowded. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'll just leave it a mystery. It's okay. <laughs> I'll just watch the YouTube videos of people who have. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll just watch. Yeah. Watch the YouTube videos and give it yeah, the Michael Bay it, it treatment. It gets pretty crazy. Yeah. It's really crowded. Oh wow! And it's it it's like night, like really late at night. When it comes, when the belief is when the moon is full, uh -huh. like when it's right in the middle of the sky, like midnight, mm -hmm. yeah, and then the fire comes. That's weird. Oh, this yeah. is so perplexing. I love that story. Yeah. How yeah. did you find out about this? Like, is it something that you've known since you were little? Like, it's a festival that your parents were really serious about. I can't remember when exactly I know about it, but I, I know that I've always known about it. Like since I was young, like, oh, the, the Naga Fireball, oh, it's time. It's that time of the year again. Like, oh, people, you know, are talking about it. You see it on TV. It's on the media. People trying to solve it on TV. Like, oh, is it real? Is it fake? Blah, blah, blah. Like you always see it like on the media too. It's pretty, it's pretty popular event. Like it's one of, it's one of those like most, one of the most important days in the year uh -huh. where people like celebrate, people um, go to temples, um, get blessings. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so yeah, I've always been, I've always known like that it's there. Not sure how, but yeah, it's like. <laughs> I feel also amongst <laughs> From all. Parents, probably. Yeah. yeah. Amongst all of the, the Southeast Asian nation. Uh, being a Malaysian myself, I feel like Laos doesn't have enough airtime. Like we don't hear a lot from Laos. Yeah, the Lao uh, TV is very limited. 
uh, people here usually relies on shows from Thailand. Uh-huh. Yeah, mo- all from Thailand. Yeah, they <laughs> rely on Thailand for like entertainment, for soap operas, for dramas, for uh-huh. TV shows. Yeah, everything is Thai. So most Lao people, I would say every Lao person can speak Thai. No way. At this point. <laughs> yeah, they can speak Thai because of the, the TV that they watch like every day. But if you ask the other way around, like can Thai people understand Lao? It's more difficult for them. They, they can only understand a few words. Mm-hmm. But the other way around, Lao, Lao people can. <laughs> because of the TV. Yeah, because of TV. That is wild to me. Okay, okay. Understood. We uh, do have shows, but... Uh-huh. Yeah, it's not it's not as popular. What about cartoons? How's I feel like the... it, I feel like it's improving, but it very slowly, like mm. very slowly. I'm definitely an introvert. Oh, okay. I'm like, I have my own. I need my own personal space. I need to recharge by myself. Be on my own. I can talk. I can do all those, but I would have to be alone again to recharge my energy uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, okay. for sure that that makes it way harder i think for you to sort of reach out and get in touch with people and sort of yeah be, uh there's there's something that we do when we are self-employed which is to essentially for want of a better word harass other people into giving us jobs yeah it must be yeah, so yeah, tiring yeah. um i feel like Yes, I'm a freelancer, but I, I, I also feel grateful that uh, I found a studio that kept me on a long-term basis. Uh huh. Like I never really had to look for a new client for like the longest time because uh-huh. of this one one game studio that you know kept me on a long-term basis. Um, but I want to move right in the future. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to balance that. Like, I can't just work full time freelance. I have to put some time into like my portfolio, my classes, mm-hmm. in order to like move forward somewhere else. So it's just yeah, just juggling that back and forth, trying to not be sucked in into one thing, like the whole time. Just trying to, you know, just m- many plans. Um, yeah, just trying to balance everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't want to be a freelancer, like. Forever. Forever. Yeah. I, I know how you feel. Um, eventually, yeah. this video is going to go out and somebody's going to see it and they're going to be like, yes, take. Um. <laughs> <laughs> take, guys. Oh, I, I hope so. <laughs> so I was, I'm, I'm still grinding my portfolio. Uh-huh. Um, I might go back to school too. I'm looking at schools as well, not just jobs. Yeah. Like, like a um, master's like, degree or graduate? It's more like certificate. Programs. Uh, okay. Yeah, for, to, for yeah, animation. Yeah, yeah. For animation, for yeah, just the creative industries in general. Mm-hmm. Trying to expand my skill mm-hmm. and a chance for me to move. Yes. As well. Yes. And explore more. Yeah. I think so, yeah, once, I'm working on that. I, I feel like for some reason once you're already in another country, you it's easier for you to build up context to get into that country's industry yeah that's that's what i feel personally like working online yes you have all these contacts but i do miss having that physical Mm. connection with another person who works in us in the same field Mm -hmm. which i feel like you well i i don't i don't find it here too often yeah. Especially 3D artists, like very specifically 3D character animation. You don't find it here. So I do miss that connection, you know, just uh-huh. being in person, um, talking to artists, working in a studio environment, uh, having a community. I feel like <laughs> so it's important. Working from home for the longest time, yeah, it does get lonely. It's nice. But... It does get lonely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, there, because you know. I, I think part part of being in the same industry with other people is the ability to sit down and go, um, I'm about to b- about something right now. Sit down and b- with me. <laughs> sit down and figure this thing out with me. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I can't. 
I, I don't want to be in that situation anymore. Um, I have wonderful people around me that I can sit down and sort of have that complaining session. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Even if I'm not in the ID industry anymore, I've pivoted to communications. Um, I, I can still sit down with my friends who are in interior design and just go, oh, yeah, how's how's it? How's the weather in interior design how's right the now? <laughs> like, um, how are the clients? Tell me your secrets, that kind of thing. What are the materials? Like, new yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I think just, just having people in your industry to be able to sit with you in real life over coffee or tea or whatever your coffee, beverage yes, of choice yes. is and and just talking about where the industry is um where the pain lies where where you want to grow away from and just seeing what other people's trajectory is can put mm -hmm. a really different spin on your perspective like if you think you're going i want to be at xyz in so and so years and then you hear your friend going yeah but xyz is uh difficult because this is this have you considered something mm -hmm. else and you're like oh okay then you start thinking about other ways to get into where you want to go like mm -hmm. the less straight yeah. the less straightforward more fun way yeah yeah you know i i used to because i was working in the u.s before i came back to laos mm -hmm. i was in the i went to school there i graduated Mm -hmm. in 2016 and i worked there in the us from 2016 to 2019 mm -hmm. so i had that environment but then my visa expired oh, no i had to come back home and then i became a freelancer and then that's when i see the difference you know i learned more about myself like what i truly wanted do i mm -hmm. want to be a freelancer or do i want to go back and pursue more opportunities over there mm -hmm. and I pay, you know, I want the other one. I, I still want to go. I still, so uh, I like, I like being in person, talking to the person. Uh, I miss that environment. Mm -hmm. So I'm right now I'm working my way back. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to find my way back somehow. We it's going to take time, but everything takes one step at a time. That's what I'm trying to tell myself. Exactly. Just exactly. keep doing little things at a time. I think I chose this story because uh, rem I mentioned earlier where I had to research stories and stuff, but this uh -huh. one, I, I heard it, you know, like it's actually from my family. Like, I heard my mom said it. I heard my grandpa said it. My uh -huh. sister have said it. So it's like something where I've always known, but uh -huh. I don't really mm, truly know the story, but I know it's there, but I had to do a little more research for this project. <laughs> like uh, what? what is the full story like i only i only knew that okay there's a goddess that are being chased by a giant up in the sky during uh days where it thunders and storming mm -hmm. that's all i know but i'm like but who is she like what is she the goddess of? who is this giant why is he why is he chasing <laughs> like a goddess up in the sky and what is this magic ball <laughs> you know so i i did i had to do a bit of research but uh-huh yeah, I, but uh, I know it's there because yeah, I heard it from uh -huh. like fam family members. Yeah. So can you can you tell me um, what the story is? Like we know there's a goddess, we know there's a ball, we know there's a giant. But what are they doing and why? <laughs> story is very simple actually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she's the goddess, the goddess of the sea, uh, and the naga. Mm -hmm. had this uh, magic ball that he, I think he was busy mm -hmm. doing something <laughs> and he needed, uh, he needed the goddess to take care of the magic ball. And then the giant wants that ball, um, I think because he wants to overpower the Naga, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, like he wants to rule something, like trying to win over the Buddha or Naga, I feel like. And but he he needs that magic ball. Mm. Um, but then of course the goddess wouldn't give it to him, and he just gets really angry and start like he's asked to like you know trying to smash her and get the ball, but it always misses. And 
every time the axe hits the clouds, that's how the thunders, you know, how we have thunders and rain in the sky. Oh. So it, it, it's because of his, yeah, his axe. So it's, that's the story, basically. <laughs> it's it's kind of cute yeah. in a way. Um, I want to know, okay, so I'm going to pronounce the name terribly. It's Mekala? Yeah, Mekala. Mekala. Mek means clouds. Uh-huh. And Kala is uh, her name. Ah, Mekala. Okay. okay. Yeah. That is, that is way better than me sitting down going, how do I read this? <laughs> <laughs> it's a It's a story among like thai and lao people so mm-hmm. we share we we both share that story ah okay okay the make color um what directed you to your piece uh i i remember this because san showed me some of your sketches initially and we were talking about scale and i think when uh the first draft came the giant was very very big and the goddess mm-hmm. was very very small and I was like, yeah. can we make her bigger? What was your initial <laughs> plan before we ruined it? Because um, the giant in mm-hmm. our culture is known to be very big. Like mm-hmm. there's, They're like giants, you know. Uh, so I want, I want it to portray that. I want it to show that he's, he is so much bigger than her, but she ha- still has no fear. She holds no fear mm-hmm. towards this giant. I, and I want to show that. But she ended up being really small in the drawing. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember. So, yeah, that's that's all I was thinking. Really, I just wanted to show that he's really big. He's terrifying. He's um, he's you know, he's very scary. But she she's still laughing and like flying around, being playful. Yeah, I wanted to portray that. Yeah, I think I think when we first saw your draft, we were like giant, giant big, but not important. I want to see her face. Because yeah, how yeah. you drew her face is the epitome of um look around and find out. Find <laughs> out. It's like I'm just gonna be the absolute and just irritate you. It's like um oh. <laughs> it's like watching a cat harass a dog. Okay. And it's just hardcore parkouring over uh furniture, places where the dog can't reach you. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Like, she has that very okay. mischievous sort of, I know yeah. I won't get caught, but I'm going to play yeah. around anyway, and I love it. Like, her face is just so awesome. cute. Awesome. Okay. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and the emphasis on the pearl. Okay, initially, I didn't know it was a wall. I thought it was some kind of pearl. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Uh, magic ball, I guess. Uh, the story describes it that way too. So I feel like you could just take it any way you like. Okay. But okay. It's, a, it's a magic ball. But I love it. I love it nonetheless. I I have a sketchbook that I always draw. I want to have something where I'm just drawing for myself mm-hmm. as well. I feel like just relying on social media and posting your work on social media, it's like, I feel like, um, for me, I feel like I'm not taking care of myself. I feel like drawing, having something for myself that is separate from social media and other people's eyes is like, it's like a journal. Mm-hmm. It's like more personal to me. Yeah. Absolutely. I used to post those, but yeah, I'm, I'm like, it's less so now. Uh, I'm focusing more on like yeah, showing my 3D work and I trying to like good. build a career out of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like social media now is is just another platform for you to market yourself instead of like you know, this is this is fun stuff that I like to do. It's no, this is what I can do. Hire me now, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I I used to have this problem where I try to just monetize everything mm-hmm. that I post. You know, it's like, I feel like it's unhealthy for me. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, why I'm not getting likes? Oh, I'm not going to get a job out of this. Why am I drawing this? Oh, I'm not going to oh. further my career with it. You know, it's very unhealthy way of thinking. So I try to separate it now. Like, I'm just going to draw this for myself. Have fun with myself. Like, uh-huh. no one's going to see this. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm just trying to. Yeah, have that boundary. 
just to that's... keep myself sane. Yeah. <laughs> not affected by social media. Yeah, um, there's there's a thing that people keep repeating, you know, the whole grind set mindset thing, which I think is so toxic. Of Everybody's like, oh, you should monetize your hobbies. And I'm like, if I monetize my hobbies, it will no longer be my yeah. hobbies. I will hate it. Exactly. That is exactly the reason. Thank you so much for sitting down with us uh, and, and talking with me. And I apologize for the sudden death of my phone, oh, yeah. which I use as my camera because I don't want to buy a camera that's attached to the computer. Oh, <laughs> because why waste money? I feel you, though. I feel you. It hurts. Um, it hurts. Um, again, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate your art. I can't wait for this to go live. And and uh, we the world finds out more about you and your piece of art. Um, is there anything you want to say to the world? Because this is going on the internet. The world? The world? Um, yeah. Just excited to see it live, like you said. And yeah, whatever, I guess, whatever you want to do in your life, just, you know, hold on to that vision and work towards it. You know, enjoy the journey, take it one step at a time. And yeah, just enjoy enjoy life nice 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 <laughs> yeah wonderful and um sagely words from emily thank you everybody for watching uh definitely go to the kickstarter because it's live now uh and and put your orders in because there's a lot of stories that we want to tell and this is only the first the beginning of southeast asians taking over your airwaves um be good be safe COVID isn't over yet mask up Mm -hmm. and yep. we'll see you next time bye see you thank you thank you so much <laughs> bye